Hello, everyone, and welcome to Off the Court, your regular guide to all things netball. And when I say all things netball, I mean all. Have we got a show for you? If I was going to put a, a TV guide out to maybe look ahead to this show, I'd give it, what, four and a half stars? Maybe up to five, because Tamsin Greenway's here. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Are you going to rate yourself <laughs> with a, a five stars there, or, or, or maybe not? Perhaps we should... I was um, maybe wait and say why we're talking about TV guides. Although if you know your netball, then you know why we're going to discuss TV guides. That's coming up. Uh, we're also going to talk Netball World Youth Cup, which has been sadly canceled this week. Uh, we've got loads on the Sun Court, but that's coming up this weekend and plenty more besides. Anything else from your world of netball that you'd like to discuss? I'll let you. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, no, I want us to get cracking with the guests because there's so much netball news coming up um, and we've got a great, great guest today. Oh, we've got a guest, have we? So we've got to be professional. Yeah. Uh, she's not just any oh, yeah. old guest. She is a mother. She's a president. She's a player. She is Nat Medhurst. Morning, Nat. <laughs> Afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is where you are. <laughs> uh, good morning to you guys over there. Thanks for having me. Hey, it is gorgeous having you. How how would you describe yourself, given that I've just given you about five titles? Um, that was all very confronting, um, hearing all of those. Um, I'm not too sure. I might rate myself about two and a half stars um, at the moment. Apparently, that's anyone who's involved in netball, that's what we're worth. Um, I, I guess a mum, to be honest now. It's quite strange it's very it's overwhelming at times but um yeah that's solely been my focus at least for the last few weeks and we're in a bit of a bubble over here in melbourne and um i'm loving it loving um being obsessed over my new little son edison we love having casey appears on off the court regularly don't we so if if you need uh, edison to have a little trip to the milk shop we're all up for that as well <laughs> Just to be encouraged, right. actually. The, the bring the audience age Perfect. down is, is what we're aiming for on, on off the court. Uh, we are going to talk about those those star ratings for those that are going, what do they keep mentioning stars for in just a moment? <laughs> but but let's get the latest on lockdown because I know stuff's got, got tough where you are. It has, over the past week, changed completely across Australia and that's really going to have an effect on Suncorp. For the very latest, here's Hannah. Thanks very much, Caroline. Now, after months of lockdown, we were all itching for the return of Suncorp Super Netball, but with Victoria and New South Wales trying to contain a second wave of COVID-19 cases, this week the Queensland government announced new border restrictions that have seen a number of changes to round one of the Super League. We've now got four derby games over two days at Brisbane's Nissan Arena. So, the Queensland Firebirds and Sunshine Coast Lightning will still open the season with the Queensland Derby, That'll be followed by West Coast Fever, who had been due to play the New South Wales Swifts, instead taking on the Adelaide Thunderbirds. The Swifts will play the Giants on Sunday, followed by the originally scheduled game of the Vixens up against the Magpies. Now, this is probably most disappointing for the Swifts and the Giants, who now have to play in Brisbane rather than their home state of New South Wales. The league has said that it will review player health and welfare as well as load and travel requirements before they announce any changes for rounds two to six. And Suncorp Super Netball CEO Chris Symington has said that while the changes were unfortunate, the fixtures are designed to deal with the uncertainties of the constantly shifting public health crisis. And he said that the league, clubs and players remain committed to ensuring a full, safe and competitive season can be conducted. So Hannah works with the, the latest then on, on what's happening. The shift essentially, Nat, means that uh, those, those big derbies we were looking for are all now going to happen in Brisbane this weekend. That's where the, the move has happened. You are president, as I said, of the Netball Players Association over in <laughs> Australia. How much were the players aware of, of what was happening and, and the shift that was happening? Um, well, to be honest, not a lot. Um, you know, we ever since COVID first start, we've had regular meetings generally every week, sometimes a couple of times a week in terms of what's been happening, how it's going to look. And I think everyone knows the impact of COVID swings dramatically um, both ways, both good and bad. And it's happening so, so quickly. And it's such a, a moving beast. It's quite hard to keep up with. We know um, for anyone who may have seen it, 
online that some of the players who were initially going to be in New South Wales actually found out um, about who they were playing and when and the changes via social media, media the beauty of social media and how it does that, <laughs> which is obviously a bit disappointing. Um, but I think a lot of it, it's just changed, as I said, so, so quickly from week to week. We initially thought all the teams were going to be hubbing here in Victoria. That's obviously not the case. It changed very quickly. And we're still hoping at some point that there may actually be a fly-in, fly-out part of the season where games might be held in other states, certainly not here in Victoria, but um, in other states, which I think would be great for that. But yeah, as I said, it's such a moving beast and um, you know, I think the communication around certain elements has lacked at times, but we're also fully aware that, you know, SSN have had a lot to, to deal with and making decisions very, very quickly. I might just um, wind you both up and let you go, because on that point, there have been a couple of changes. So there's not going to be the extra time that we, we thought. <laughs> well, I see you both grinning already. <laughs> uh, no bonus point, no extra time as, as we thought. But that two point shot that we know, Nat, as players, you weren't um, Love it. maybe... Love <laughs> <laughs> You weren't maybe that communicative. As I said, I'm just going to put my feet up. Both of you have a little word about what is still there and what maybe shouldn't have still been there. Oh, oh you can go first, Nat. You, you give me your thoughts. Wimp. Um, obviously, there's a lot to it. The way in which it was all communicated, which we've spoken about, was incredibly poor. Um, you know, none of the key stakeholders were consulted in making the decision. We were basically told um, we've got an announcement tomorrow and then this is what it is and deal with it. Um, so there was nothing from that side of um the coin where you know whether it was players coaches even the umpires no one like that was discussed in it um, we obviously already had rolling subs which are implemented which i don't mind um, i think the thing for me i love just the integrity of netball and what it is and there's a big concern i think across everyone that we're moving so far away from what netball particularly for grassroots as well like what are these players actually playing now to play in the future it's a game as well that's not replicated in any other country either now and tamsin if you saw what is deemed to be the two point shot line it's actually embarrassing for shooters um it is that close <laughs> um it kind of then makes a bit of a mockery of it being deemed worthy of two points uh when i saw it when i rocked up to a training session with the girls and i said is that the line for the two point <laughs> shot that is unbelievable you were like um, sign me back it, up <laughs> I just thought that is not worth a two point shot. It's literally half the circle um, is in that area. So that's another thing we know talking to umpires as well. They've found it quite difficult in terms of how they are going to umpire it and moderate it and that sort of thing. So there's, I think, a lot of elements around the whole two point shot and implementing that weren't really considered. And the fact that we haven't trialed it anywhere. Um, I know people love the hype of fast five, but Fast Five is very different. I think that's more got to do with the atmosphere that is created around Fast Five and for the fans, which needs to be brought into netball over here. And I think my other concern is how messy the game is because I find Fast Five horrible to watch. <laughs> it's an incredibly messy, messy game on the back of people trying to jack up two and three point shots. But um, I guess time, time will tell to see how it all actually plays out. I guess, I guess my... My issue with it is that I I love the traditional game. Um, one of the big problems we have, have over here is that we we don't have enough um, commercial backing. Still, we don't get enough fan base. Still, um, and so any elements that I think we can add to the game to increase that is huge. However, there are things around that. Firstly, if you are going to um, implement a rule, and you'll probably be able to fill us in on this, um, has the backing from the media been done? You know, have have SSN, they've had a lot to deal with, you know, have they really gone out and promoted this as sort of a brand new thing, releasing it, trying to get people to support it and look at it differently? I guess that's the first issue. The second thing, you, you kind of touched on it, you've been down to, to the Magpies already, you've had a look at their sessions, you've seen the two-point line. Um, 
tactically has it changed loads because that was a big concern for the traditionalists it's like oh you know we're going to be passing in and out i'm like what any different to passing it under the post of the shooter now i remember you back in the early days um i was a huge fan and you would shoot from anywhere and it was a big aussie thing big kiwi thing you'd shoot from anywhere it was something that was in in our, we were trying to produce in our game we actually had an aussie coach come over marcado and and she um put almost the fear into us from shooting. It became a very high percentage game. It had to be, you know, hit your 85, hit your 90%. I remember at the time me and Rachel Dunn, um, it, it, it definitely changed the way we play and the way we wanted to put a ball for the shot. So I, I think it swung massively about everybody playing under the post, which is why then you've got your massive shooters uh, come in. Do you not think, and as a, you're about a bit taller than me. You had a slightly more successful career at me than goal attack, just just slightly. Um, but do you not think it will give the opportunity to give give those players that chance to get back in there um, and bring back something in the game that we perhaps don't have anymore? Um, possibly. I think the big thing is, I think if we're going to put in a two-point shot, it needs to actually be worth two points. As I said, the marking of it, it actually makes a little bit of a joke. Um, of it doing anything. I also think, are we then stopping rewarding good play that actually, and don't get me wrong, I understand around the tall shooters, but are we then not rewarding good play that actually enables you to get under the post and close to the ring, whatever that may look like. The other side of it as well, which has been discussed is what are the def defenders actually going to do? So are we going to actually see them be quite strategic in the, it's played for the last five minutes of every quarter and are they just going to contact the shooters under the post um you know it obviously changes that side as well we we've thrown up a, well what are they actually going to do to try and prevent shooters from you know utilizing that two-point shot in those last five minutes of the game um I think, as I said, the marking of it, anyone can shoot it, probably a 10-year-old net set goal. You, you say anyone can shoot it. You say anyone can shoot it. I'm not convinced. convinced. <laughs> it's I really that, short. The I, was blown, I was blown away as to what was deemed a two-point shot. It just, I thought, you can't get excited about that. Not at all. Um, it needs to be more like it is in Fast Five if they want to create a bit of hype about it. That's my opinion. See, I think I think the whole thing through this is that they could have given all the furrow that was around it, the noise that happened, they could have quite easily dropped it, given that they've dropped the other couple of things as well. Extra time. Understandable because of fitness and, and wanting to prevent injuries too, but it could have gone. It stays though, it stays, and no doubt we'll still be talking about it in, in five, ten years' time. Hopefully, I guess from your perspective, Nat, we won't be talking about it because it'll be gone. But maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll love it and maybe it will stay. And let's move on to something oh. maybe less contagious. Contagious or contentious? Probably a little bit of both. Less contentious <laughs> and contagious. It certainly was because it went viral, didn't it, this week, which was a tweet from a journalist who picked up on a little article that was in The Age. This was Laura Jolly. Um, what said it all? Uh, so this was in The Age, two and a half stars for Super Netball. It mentions your mate down at Collingwood, Jeeva Mentor, <laughs> and then talks about the, the glamour of the sport. Gives two and a half out of five, says uh, that not just for schoolgirls and workplace bonding, this is now a full glamour sport for many. Justifiably, there was anger <laughs> and a comment thrown uh, at this article. Go on then, Nat. What did you make of it? Oh, it's one. I think Jeeva would be absolutely mortified that her photo is in line with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> being um, with glamour and only rated two and a half stars. But oh, it's a joke. It's quite embarrassing. I think as everyone said, they're talking about a game or games that haven't even happened yet. And to still refer to schoolgirls and glamour and that side of thing. I'd like to think that our sport has, or netball women's sport actually in general, has moved past being given that sort of stereotype um, connotation with it. It's um, as I think all the players were in absolute um, uproar about it and just could not believe it. I don't know if anyone's actually seen it online. Melbourne Vixens in line with their um, mm. apparel sponsor Puma actually put out a video in um, going against that, which was amazing. I thought it was very cleverly done and very, very quickly done, which was great. And I think when 
as athletes, we know how hard we work, um, you know, what it is that we deal with, the physicality of our game. It is far from glamorous. Um, and I think everyone will certainly be seeing that. But I think it's just another thing along with the two point shot and, and everything else that's happening <laughs> that's getting netball in the media. So maybe we'll just take it as a good thing. I think um, for us, it was, it was a weird thing as well, because we look to Australia at how advanced you are with, with female sport, especially netball. You know, we look over there and go, wow, we want that media coverage and we want this and we want the professionalism in the game. And then you get hit with that and you just realise that, that actually in certain pockets and certain places it still goes on and it's so frustrating mm. for women's sport as a whole because you know I'm, I'm all for open journalism and, and people writing what they want but it's such a naive comment to not even understand the sport and like you said how can you rate something two and a half stars the season's not even been played <laughs> I don't even I don't even understand where that came from and and I think um well, Nat, you'll see it as well. Over here, we have such a strong netball family. And I think you guys have that over there straight away. Vixen's got on there and, and the support that the sport has. But how do we go about cracking that? Like we, you know, we still feel that we're playing catch up to Australia. You guys are leading the way in the sport and in the league. Um, you know, how do we go about cracking those pockets that still promote the sport as they do? Yeah, I think it's a tough one. Um, you know, I think netball, I think in particular, we do always tend to play a very clean cut sort of image. And I think we really do need to try and get down to athletes and what it is that we go through and, and what it's like and to make it more appealing. As I said, in regards even to the two point shot as well, netball, I find, I know this is horrible for me to say, and I should be watching more netball, but I can find it quite boring sometimes to watch and I think that's a massive element where we do we need to create a specta spectacle around our sport um, so that fans the media actually do find it really engaging um, and make it really really appealing for not only young kids but also for adults mm -hmm. as well I think that's a massive target market that netball or women's sport really need to try and target a lot harder um, than what we've done in the past and and as I said, to make it a really a great event for not only kids, but for parents, adults to actually go to the sport and enjoy and enjoy what it is, the athleticism, the ferociousness. I think netball still is tainted with that. Oh, it's a non-contact sport. You can't go near anyone. Um, and as I said, we need to though, show stories around that um, and show that the work rate of the athletes to be the best that they can be. And that's why the, the video response from Melbourne Fixens was was exactly right because it was about power it was about that physicality on court but you're right about uh, and just briefly because we will we'll talk about the season because that is coming up this weekend but it might be an opportunity with everything shifting now to get the lights down on court we spoke it's simple things like a t-shirt cannon here and there but just creating that buzz and that that noise around it and that focus on court things we've discussed times in and if you're streaming games you don't want multiple lines on the court do you You don't want it to look like it's in a sports hall and we've got to make the elite look like it's something the party you want to be at well i think australia again have, have taken that to the next level in terms of their venues in terms of their spectators but i agree with nat almost even the way we talk about the sport has to change i'm all for the heroes and the villains and i, w I was doing an interview the other day and and you know i was saying yes it's amazing that someone like rachel dunn works for the nhs but i, I don't want to talk about that anymore i want to talk about no. you know what she's like on the court why she falls over why people why people talk about that how many hits she takes you know all all the bits i was a marmite player um i know i know nat has um attitude on the court which i absolutely love i want to i want to talk about that i want to talk about players personalities on there and, and start having a different angle of the sport to talk about as well as the razzmatazz which i think we can we can easily start bringing in all right let's look ahead then to this weekend before we get some of your social in now who are the players that are going to deliver those hard hits that you're you're kind of thankful you're not you're not there this season <laughs> uh, there's always a few of them well joe weston broke a couple of my ribs uh, last season so <laughs> Still have her, her bony elbows out and about, that's for sure. Uh, Kate Maloney as well, I think the way in which she goes about her business, um, you know, she's a real dogged um, defender there through the Vix, for the Vixens and, and, and their captain as well. I'm very interested to see how Gabby Simpson will go this season. Obviously another year again as captain, but 
I think she will certainly be going out with a point to prove, particularly after being dropped from the Australian Diamonds and will have, I guess, somewhat some redemption, particularly with the Aussie Diamonds, uh, somewhat sometime naming a new, um, a new coach. And the other player I'm very excited to see, and I'm not just saying this, but is um, Maddie Brown um, at Collingwood. So her coming back after an ACL, it's been a long, long rehab for her. And to see her back out there, um, her skills, her footwork, everything that she does in that forward line is absolutely phenomenal. And um, I think her skills will certainly be very exciting to watch. Yeah, it's the, the old proverbial shot window, isn't it, Tamsin, for for the new Australian coach coming in as and when that announcement happens. Whoever but, but suddenly, is. Well, that's it. Everyone, everyone's got a, a, an opportunity again, haven't they, to show? Yeah, they have. And, and we talk about the start of four-year cycles, and this is one. It, it seems like we've kind of lost the year. You know, you're watching New Zealand, you're watching all these new youngsters coming through going, well, you've seen Toei Ava and Weki, and you're going, well, these guys are clearly going to play for the Ferns one day. I'm intrigued to see... Um, the the diamonds league i i think uh you know they are the shop window for the best talent in the world so it's not just the aussie players i want to see how you know how's being hate on are playing um and some of the african um teams as well proscovia uh, pretoria so there's so many players that you just go oh i want to have a look at those now i'm intrigued you can tell me quickly who is going to use the the rubbish two-pointer the best who, who which shooting circle is going to nail that <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to say probably GWS. Um, I would say okay. them. I oh, actually and Vixen and Vixens because both Tegan and Vixens enjoy the longer shot. Well, they enjoy the longer shot. Yeah, I reckon they. I'm in check. See, this could be Vixen if then. if they use that well. This could be Vixens' year then because they always. For for me, Vixens are, are that team that just need that bit of excitement. They play so typical Aussie, and not to bag you guys out, but I mean, there's there's no uh, <laughs> predominantly other than Kamwenda. I say bag you out. You're like the the best in the world. However, <laughs> other than Kamwenda, when, they, when they've got their team on, they're they're pretty much full Aussie. So it's pretty much man on man do the basics front cut and drive to the edge so i'm intrigued if they can nail that two-point shot they that could be their year then right yeah definitely i think because both tegan and kaylee caitlin thwaites are very comfortable in shooting and as i said it's not that far out so <laughs> I, um, I think they will certainly <laughs> utilize it the big the big thing though and as i stated before is what the defenders do tactically in trying to prevent yeah. it because um, mm. obviously using that last five minutes teams will have the ability to catch up or push out in front really really quickly um and so yeah what defenders actually do to try and force the shooters to only take one point shots will be very very interesting gonna... we know defenders aren't that bright so who knows well yeah but how, i'm gonna put this there. out there i actually <laughs> think if the aussie def if the aussie defenders get this right this will help them as, as a diamonds team moving forward because i think people have learned how to play against their tenacious man on man almost force you into errors i think they've actually got to go out and start winning ball and I, you know, without the uh, broken ribs and the, the elbows in the circle, I think they're, <laughs> they're going to have to change their style. And I think, honestly, it will help across the board as a diamonds, which is a rubbish thing to say, really. But it, I'd it say no will. one wants that. Anyway, no one wants that. About, <laughs> no, apart from bring back the one no pointers. <laughs> yeah, do it. Uh, so we just thrown oh, in you're the, on board. The, the, you're on board, aren't you, Tamsin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no two point shot. That can coach against, then then she'll have a go at. <laughs> a hashtag off the court. If you want to argue with these two, they'll carry on the conversation, no doubt. Uh, after we've hung up on them. <laughs> Use hashtag off the court. Right, let's get to some of your social. And you mentioned the ANZ, some big news out of ANZ this week, and that is Pulse head coach will be no more after this season. I mean, she's still going to be around, but she just won't be coaching Pulse, Tamsin. Yeah, and big news, um, done such a, a good job with Central Pulse. You know, it looks like they're the team to beat this season. I'm, I'm not sure anybody can beat them. Um, I know I've known Yvette for years. I think she's a quality coach. It'd be interesting to see where she goes next or what plan she's got. England Netball are back training this week. Yes. So a, a few changes in the sport. We've seen Jess Thurlby tweet. We've seen England Netball tweet as well about them being back, which is a huge move, Tamsin. It is a huge move. Can you just get Scotland on the same page, please? Because I quite like to do my job. Uh, but yes, <laughs> it's brilliant to see England are leading the way, of course, uh, back on court. Um, and, you know, still rumours that an autumn or winter series will go ahead. So we're all keeping fingers crossed. But yeah, 
amazing to see. And look how excited they look. <laughs> like all players to be back uh talking of excitement this one from mickey austin next who's uh, already she's a little bit early packing her, her suitcase but we do know how she loves to be organized grab suitcase immediately this was after a video was released from uh, netball south africa all about cape town and what a joy it's going to be to have the the world cup there too which we're all looking forward to Nat, are you are you targeting cape town you're going to be back for the world cup in south africa <laughs> yep, I'll be back um, in 23. <laughs> I don't even want to know how old I'm going to be. What's that? That's another three, three years. Oh, geez, I'd be nudging 40. 27. No, that, 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 that won't happen. That will not happen. Um, but no, it's. I think it's great for the World Cup to be going there. It's, um, you know, I unfortunately never had the opportunity to go over to South Africa to play, but I think particularly what they've done in the last few years, obviously under Norma Plummer, um, the players that they have there and their development, it, it makes it incredibly exciting um, for their sport. What about playing then, Nat? <laughs> we'll end the show on that. What What's next for you? What are the plans? Um, well, to be honest, on the back of COVID, <laughs> it has opened a little bit of an opportunity or a window for me to actually potentially play this season. So I went for my first, I'll say run, but it was a somewhat very slow jog this morning. Um, so was that three weeks post post baby? Um, and I had an emergency Caesar. But so who knows? I'm actually trying to see whether or not I could possibly get up to Queensland to potentially play the back end of the season. Um, I always thought this would have been my last year, and I still don't really know. But I think if I was to play, then I would then probably hang up the dress for good um, at the end of this year. So we'll wait and see. Just, Incredible. just never say never, and and just just yeah. get back before the first one because after the second one, it's a hell of a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> noted, noted. <laughs> we're we're here for any advice tip. like that. Yeah, any of that. that you <laughs> yeah, need, uh, uh, great advice. I'll take that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Hey, well, look, we would love to see you back on that court and hopefully sooner rather than, than later. And I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Uh, just finally, your hopes for the team this season, you're only coming back if they're winning, right? Of course, yeah. So I'm going to see how the first six rounds go. <laughs> I can't um, wait to analyse. Well, I just have to say, I can't wait to analyse your first two-point shot now. I'll be like, she said it was easy. It's just easy. It's just, just literally like that. I can't wait. Oh, we know. Brilliant. Okay. I'm only we sure. all know you're sat at home practicing. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, she could have been back four weeks ago, but she's just trying just those final two point shots. And uh, that Medhurst, yep. mother, president, Collingwood Magpies legend, back playing at the end of this season. It's been a delight having you off the court. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much, guys. Sky Sports, feel it all.